We were pretty much in the middle of nowhere, happy to have a little shade in the cockpit. At the last minute before we left Progresso, Robbie installed the Bimini arch that actually doesn't belong to us. It belongs to a boat neighbor from a couple of years ago, and we've been transporting it around Mexico for some time now, hoping that we would run into her again. At least for now, this extra item on board is pulling its weight. We were randomly anchored off the middle of nowhere. We had dropped the hook when we lost all wind. We anchored in about five meters, four and a half meters of water in the dark, and it just looks a little bit rocky with some sandy patches. We managed to miss the sandy patch, but you know, it was nighttime. Yeah, yesterday we found all our leaks couple of bolts in the deck and very unfortunately this hatch. So I don't know if we're going to be beating as bad as we were yesterday but if the weather is like yesterday we're going to get a lot of uh, nice splashes coming in through this hatch so I think it's worth taping up it's leaking definitely through the the gasket good supervising Choco Mm -hmm. Does that look good to you? If this was some gorilla tape, this would be much better. But... Beautifully taped, Robbie. Robbie's back had been hurting. I told him never to bring up the anchor. He was forbidden from doing it. Want me to save your back? You want me to pull up the anchor? You okay? You yeah, going? I have no problem doing it. Crank away. It's basically what you want to do is go to, click, tack, tack. And you don't have to go further back than this because there's no need. Yeah. Because it, it will not hold to the next click. So yeah. basically movement is there. Tuck. Tuck. Bottom. Uh, I can't wait to have it electric. It works, we just have to get more batteries, then we have to get the cable for it. And did, 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 did. Morning exercise. This, this side is stuck on something in the cockpit. This is the best time for Ravi to get some cooking done. We're even more stable like this than we were when we were at anchor. The boat was rocking quite a bit, but you know, going blazing at 1.2 knots, we can be nice and steady and we're moving, we're crawling up towards where we need to go. And he can work in the galley without getting uh, rocked around. Nothing gets the wind going like cooking. As soon as you get to the kitchen, the wind's going to pick up now. Just because I'm cooking. Now we have bees. The usual bees. Put a mosquito net. Stop them from going inside. They're welcome to any water. But they can't go inside my boat. Ooh, rice and vegetables. Uh, do you want some uh, sesame oil on top of it? Yes, please. Yeah, I can give you this one. Choco had his own boiled chicken and rice, but he likes to eat his poppies even more. The day started out without very much wind at all. It was coming from the land a little bit, and it just swung around. Well, it died. We were kind of bobbing around for a minute, and then it came from the ocean slowly. And now we've got an ocean breeze, and we're on our way just like yesterday.
The ocean is often delightfully flat out here compared to other places we've sailed. However, the challenge for us was to constantly be on the tiller. As we stuck to the coastline, we would rarely see deeper than eight meters on the sounder. And soon enough, we would see a very, very shallow, but clenching reading. Nada. Nada. I'm gonna try an open roadstead anchorage again. This time just temporarily, like really, hopefully not for the whole night. Uh, the wind is supposed to come from a better direction in the middle of the night. The alternative would be to take a tack out to sea and lose most of the ground that we've just made we can anchor ourselves in one spot until we stop losing ground. We could tack, zigzag and not gain much ground, or we could anchor and wait it out for a more favorable angle of wind. Usually when I look at the forecasts on windy.com, I look at the gusts the wind gust, not the wind. I don't even consider the normal wind forecast. I, I look at the wind gust forecast and that usually is more representative of what the wind is like. So if they say it's gonna be gusting to 20, it means you're gonna get 20 sustained. And there wasn't supposed to be more than 15, 18 gusts today. And so far it's been a good idea to anchor. I think we're much more comfortable than if we would have been beating into this and I'm not sure where we would have gone yeah we would have just been zigzagging back and forth probably not uh, moving so forward I think this was the the best course of action early morning not quite early enough though because we had a really hard time rolling out of bed come Choco come Choco Good. But it was time to raise the sails again. meters of water all day. Right. We're going to be sailing in less than five meters of water most of the day. Typical Mexico fashion, that light is not lit. We came in last night looking for it on the chart. I could see it right before sunset, but the little light bulb is not working. Rapala or... 
that horrible noise that you hear is the engine. That's so bad. Pretty bad. Like, this will be the first time we're using it other than getting out of the harbor. And I don't think I'll end up using this footage because it's such a bad noise. Yeah, it sounds fine. I could have vibrated it because it's very long, but it's, it's fine. It's not vibrating. Definitely not as nice as sailing. There seems to be a bit of current or, you know, our one knot forward with the sail turned into 0 0.5 in the wrong direction. We'd be going backwards, losing ground if we didn't have it on. I made a couple of tomato sauce jars before leaving, and Robbie made a wonderful chipotle chili sauce. All I had to do was to heat it up in one saucepan with some pasta, for a lazy, easy meal. The usual weather pattern continued with the wind picking up from the north, east, and we followed that course until it became too shallow. And then we would tack back out to sea. We turned off the engine when we realized that it wasn't giving us much more speed, only giving us anxiety about all its fuel and oil leaks. Uh, I found out what the problem was. What's the problem? That I want to double wrap the rope so it doesn't slip, the rope catches inside the winch. So it's the winch that's causing the problem? It's, a, it's just the way I was tying the rope. We made one final tack towards land as we approached the harbor called Rio Lagartos. Nah, it's not too small. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's starting to get shallow. The countdown is on. There's a little uh, bit of sh uh, shoaling in front of the entrance to one side. We're trying to miss that, but it means going really upwind. It's better to like tiptoe in slowly than to... I'll pull it at 45 degrees to, to decrease the draft. To... That's, that's one way to decrease the draft. We crank it, we open up full. You go at full speed. The more the boat's healed over, the less draft we have. Robbie was joking about healing to decrease our draft, but it was no joking matter a couple minutes later. It's common for fishing pongas around here to try and pass in front of us, which caused us a couple of hair-raising moments, but luckily this one decided to pass behind. He's sitting fast in the motorboat. You think we're going faster? Well, I was until I stopped. Well, this cute little boat went in for the forward pass. We approached the entrance and Choco became restless at the sight of land. We were just about freaking out at this moment, eyes glued to the depth sounder, as the depth came up and up and up. We were healing pretty well at this point, and the depth sounder gave us a reading of 0 0.9 meters, meaning that we had less than 20 centimeters or like half a foot under our keel to spare. As we reached the entrance proper with the green and red lights on each side, the depth went down again. 1.5 and then 2 meters on the sounder. Phew! The plan was for me to turn directly into the wind. Robbie would drop the anchor. Of course, he would need the windless handle for that. And then drop all the sails. Luckily we did all this without sailing right over a party of bathers on the beach. Within a minute, Robbie launched the dinghy and was bringing Choco to shore. This was a bit of a heart-stopping place to come into. However, we could tell right away that it was well worth it, as interesting flora and fauna began to appear before us. 
Choco started rubbing his fur in everything. Chocolate? Hey. Mm -hmm. Choco, come here. Hey, Choco. Choco. Muy mal. Muy, mm. Mm. Seeing as we were healed over when we entered, and we had barely enough water under our keel during flat conditions, so there was no depth left for waves bouncing us up and down, we wondered for a second how we were going to get out. Then we checked the tide chart of the area and realized that we had come in during a low tide. We observed the water levels that day and saw that it wasn't a particularly low tide, but low enough that we would definitely be making sure to leave during a high tide next time. Those guys are going out, out, out. Maybe the fishing is good here at night with some bait. Is anybody getting anything? No, I haven't seen anyone reel anything. I think one guy caught something because we high him going like, hey. It's a boat lizard who followed us here. I wonder what he's been thinking about the sail. What is happening? I could already, <laughs> I could already hear the guy complaining about the smell of the food coming from my boat. He was like, those bastards are cooking, now I want What's going on? He was like, those pendejos are not going to come here, what's going on? Bunch of stuff, we saw horseshoe crab. It's very rich in life, this crab's right there. The one right there. There's a lot, huh? Crabby! That's the heron right there, I think that's the heron. It's the night heron, or whatever they call it. Just the nice area. It's so nice. It's quiet. There's just some families playing on the beach side, on the beach edge. Some guys fishing. There's no sounds except for <laughs> nice sounds. And then I hear your video of obnoxious guy fishing. The small town of Rio Lagartos was a one nautical mile row away. We decided that we would not only take the opportunity to fill up on some fresh water, ice, and veggies, but also try to catch some lunch along the way. Oof, we're moving. Yeah, in the right direction. Here's your little mangrove jack. You can row us a little bit towards the... Towards the shore? Yeah. Robbie tried some casting. We could see a lot of fish darting in and out from under the mangrove edge. But he wasn't having much luck with the silicone shrimp. Time to try something else. Right in here, this is where they put a buoy. One of these arms in the mangrove, probably standing around. That is incredible. Hmm? <laughs> 
A needlefish? Yes. A little needlefish. Oof, they really have long... I think these have the longest, most delicate nose I've ever seen. Just show them a bit to this. Oh. Oh, you got them in? Yeah, I got them in as fast as I could. Olvido, mi changlas. Olvide. You should have olvido, olvide. Well, I forgot my chanclas. The dark right here. The town was more animated and open for business than we anticipated. So we got some fresh oranges to squeeze, some nice juice, and some oil for the engine. Are you good? Gracias. It was a fruitful visit to town. I'm going to sit in the giant chair. Back at the boat, we began to realize that our anchorage was the tourist spot where bathers come to rub the white sand and clay all over themselves. In the green is is the dust from the thing that has... Ah. It's the copper dust in the seawater. Still lots of oil in the engine. That's a good sign. Oh yes. Let's see how much oil. I mean, there's oil coming out, but it's not like it's not controllable. We were still trying to procure lunch. Nice. 15 pound flounder. That'd be really nice. Oh. I think the, it's a bunch of baby flounders around. Yeah, I got a small bite. Could either be puffer fish or little baby flounders on the bottom. Nibble, nibble. Oh, it's a little fishy. Not edible. What are you even biting the lure for, man? We caught my mistake. What is it? It's a guppy. No, not guppy. No, it's like a baby grouper. Oh, it's right to the eye. No, I missed the eye. It's a baby back. grouper. Baby grouper? Yeah. With cell phone reception here at the entrance, we looked up the weather forecast and knew that we would have to leave this magical place tomorrow morning.